Hi everyone, and welcome back to Anyone Can Learn to Code. In this screencast, we'll actually be creating and running our first Ruby program. To do so, we'll need to use two tools, a text editor and the terminal. We use the text editor to write our Ruby code and use the terminal to actually run the Ruby code. I talk a bit about text editors in the show notes below this screencast, and I cover the terminal basics in screencast 5. Let's first go to our terminal, and I'm actually going to create a new directory in which we're going to save our new Ruby projects. I'm going to call this Ruby Projects, appropriately enough. And now that we have this directory ready, I'm going to switch to the text editor. And even before I'm going to write any Ruby code, I'm going to save the file to the appropriate directory. So I'm going to save it to my Ruby Projects folder that I have right here. And I'm going to name the file example. And in order to indicate that it's a Ruby program, you have to end the file name with .rb. And this way, we can actually run the program. rb is some sort of abbreviation for Ruby. So now we can save it. And now we have our first Ruby file called example.rb. Now let's actually try to run this file, even though there's no code in it yet. So let's go back to our terminal. And to run any file, you type in the Ruby command followed by the file name. So we'll do Ruby example.rb. And we get an error, which says no such file or directory. And that's because our terminal is not yet in the Ruby projects directory. We created the Ruby projects directory, but we haven't actually navigated to it. So in order to do so, we do cd Ruby projects. Now we're in the Ruby projects directory. Now we can actually try running our example.rb file, and it successfully ran. We just ran our first Ruby program. It just didn't do anything because there's no code in it. Now let's fix that by going to our text editor and adding some code. But first we're going to introduce a brand new Ruby command, the puts command or put s command, which takes a string and actually spits it out into the terminal window. So we have to do puts followed by a string. In this case, my string will be anyone can learn to code. We will save the file, go back to the terminal, run rubyexample.rb again, boom. It printed out to the terminal window, anyone can learn to code. But Uncle Jay, Uncle Jay! Yes, monkey. That's a that's that's a very basic program that barely does anything. Well, we're starting with something basic because we're just starting out. Eventually, we'll learn how to write complete programs. Awesome. Now we have our first functioning Ruby program. Let's take what we've learned about variables so far to make our example program slightly more complex. Let's do instead of puts anyone can learn to code we will do x equals anyone can learn to code, which if you'll recall, takes this string of anyone can learn to code and stores it inside the variable x. And now let's do a second line which says puts x. So now we've got a slightly more complicated two line program. Let's go back to the terminal, run rubyexample.rb, and it does the exact same thing but we demonstrated the use of variables in our Ruby program. Now let's introduce one more Ruby concept, and that is sort of the converse to the puts command, which is the gets command, spelled G-E-T-S. The gets command waits for the user to type something in and then stores what the user typed in as a string inside a variable. Here's how you would use the gets command in action. Let us first delete these first two lines, we're not going to be using them anymore. And we will say, and say, puts, please type something, and then press enter. So as we know, that will print that string to the terminal window. Now let's do x equals gets. And what that does is says, let's wait for the user to type something in the terminal window, and we're going to take that string and store it inside the variable x. 
And on our third line, we'll say put you typed in x. And here we're using the concept of concatenation to take what the user typed in and add it to the string containing the words you typed in. Let us save this program, go back to the terminal, run it. Here it says please type something and then press enter. So I will. I'll type in something. And it says you typed in something. Oh, Uncle Jay! Okay, this isn't some kids show that you can just pop up on. And oh. why do you call me Uncle? Stop calling me Uncle. Oh, well, uh, uh, a monkey called you Uncle. Well, that's because I thought maybe I misheard oh. him. But, uh, yeah, enough of this. Alright! Okay, now let's build something that is even more interesting. This will be a new program, which we'll call Reversify. Let's go back to our text editor. So let's start a new file and save it inside the same Ruby projects directory and call it reversify.rb. Okay, and let's start it with putting a string to the terminal window, which will say, welcome to Reversify. Please enter the string you'd like us to reverse. And what this program is going to do is going to ask the user to type in a string, and then it will print the reverse version of that string back into the terminal window. So it will start with this welcome message, and then we will do x equals gets. So we're going to wait for the user's input, and it will store it inside the variable x. And then we will do puts the reverse is and it concatenate onto the end of that x dot reverse. Let's save that program. Go back to the terminal and run it. So Ruby reversify dot rb and it says welcome to reversify. Please enter the string you'd like us to reverse. And let us just do kazoo. And it says the reverse is Uzak. Okay, at this point, I'd say you know enough Ruby to be dangerous. Anything and everything that we've learned in previous episodes, you can use and incorporate into your own Ruby program. I'd highly encourage you to experiment by creating your own Ruby programs. And this way, you'll get much more practice working with Ruby. Thanks for watching. Anyone can learn to code.